This has got to be the fastest and the simplest way to make Google Forms. I'm going to show you an example in language teaching, but this could be done for any area of education. Let's just take a quick look at what you're going to learn in this video. You literally write in a topic and choose your language and your level. It will then produce a text with images and vocabulary and comprehension questions. The key thing then is to click on the magic button. There are a few settings to choose from. And then what you're going to see on the screen is a Google form, which you can share with your students. I've never come across a quicker tool. So let's get started and please remember, like the video, share the video, comment on the video, and of course, join me on my YouTube channel. So the technology is called diffit.com. We're gonna work with the AI tool and all we need to do is to literally write in a topic and then choose a level, choose a language, and this will work in multiple languages and then click on generate resources. So let me just quickly write in a title. So I've written in a title, The Great Fire of London. I'm gonna choose quite a high level. So we're gonna go for about the grade nine, and this is on the American grading system. I'm gonna choose English. Of course, it could be in other languages. And I'm gonna click on Generate Resources. Now it's actually gonna generate a picture, a text, comprehension questions, vocabulary, etc., which we can just print out and use. But what we can also do is link this into Google Forms. So let's just have a quick look at what it's produced. We can see on the screen it's produced and some images. In fact, we can choose an image and then we've got a text. Notice there's a lot of things you can do with this text. So you can adjust the level. You can check the sources. That can be really interesting. You can edit it. And if we come down, we've got a summary of the text, but also we've got some key vocabulary. Now, if you haven't got enough words and you want to add some more, you can click here and choose to add some more words. So for example, let's add another couple of words and we'll pull them in from the text. So we click on generate and that will actually pull two more words from the text. And if we come down here, we can do the same with the multiple choice questions. We've got three questions, but if we want to, we can add a few more. In fact, you're gonna add different styles of questions as well. I'm just gonna add three more comprehension questions. So I'm gonna click on that button there, and that's gonna generate some additional questions for me. Happy with the rest of it. Now, this is where it gets interesting. There's lots of formats in which you can now use this. So you could save it as a PDF file, you could put it onto Google Forms, etc. Now, you can click here, but actually, the quickest way to do it is to click here. So Diffit literally generates all this content all at the click of a button. And if you click at, look at the top here, you'll notice you've got three buttons. This will access it as a PDF file and you can print that out. This will access it as a doc and this will access it as a Google form. Now there are other tools actually that do a very similar thing. They generate content and one of them that's interesting is called Twi. And I will put a link on the screen now to access Twi because it's great for language teachers. And it's very similar to Diffit, but it actually does a few more activities. But let's now have a look at the Google form. But if you want to do Google Forms, it's the one in the middle. Now, you will need to connect to your Google Forms account. That's absolutely vital. Now, when you do this as well, and when you first come in, it will probably look like this. My suggestion is you take some of these out. There's no point really in having the short answer questions in a Google Form and the open-ended prompts. What you really want is that the students can read the text, answer the questions, and get immediate feedback. So make those choices. So now all you need to do is click on export. So click on that button there, and it's gonna generate the content, and hopefully it's gonna add it in to my Google Forms. And you can see it says open in Google Form. Remember, I've already connected my account, and you will need to do that. It will give you the opportunity to connect to your Google account. And I'm gonna click in open in Google Forms, and you'll see actually that this is instantly ready. There it is, I've got myself a whole activity and even if I come down here and look I'll see actually that already Google Forms knows which is the correct answer which isn't it's it's literally in exported from Diffit absolutely all the information it needs now how do you share this with students well you click on the send button and then you click here you can copy you can actually make the link a bit shorter copy that link and send it to the students and they will be able to do the activity Students will get instant feedback when they do the answers, but of course you can also access and see the results. And I'm gonna show you now how you do that 
Really hope that you're liking this video and if you are, please like it, please share it, please subscribe and please join me on my YouTube channel. Just a super quick break from the video just to say if you do like the video then please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. There are loads more free videos on the site. I specialize in making videos that show language teachers how to use technology. One other thing, if you sign up to the newsletter at the moment, then you will get a free 14 part course where I show you some of the key technologies that we can use in language teaching. There really are no tricks, nearly everything that I highlight is free. That was all, let's get back to the video. Now once the students start doing the exercises, where will you see their responses? Let me show you. Here is one I did the other day. I added in the extra question, what is your name and what is your email address? So that I simply could get the student's name and email address. But I added those questions myself and you can do that by just clicking here and clicking on add and then just writing, for example, what is your name? And then hopefully it'll update to short answer and that will be then your question. Okay, so I don't need it twice, but um, you can see, let me just delete that. So that's, that's a good idea. But if I come up here, you can see I've got the responses. So if I click on this button, I get a summary of all the responses. But if I come down here, much more interesting for me is that I get a breakdown of each question and how many students got the, the correct answer, how many students got the, in, the answers incorrect. Now we were doing a test, so quite a lot of the students got the answers wrong because I didn't really give them time to read the text. Uh, this was just like a test that I was doing actually in a teacher training session. So that's a fabulous tool and probably the fastest way so far that I've found for AI to make Google Forms. Okay, really hope you liked that video. And if you did, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Make use of all the drop down menus at the top, loads of content, and there's also some content on the front page that you can access. If you want to keep up with my work, sign up to the newsletter. You get updated with all the latest videos and the free webinars that we organize. And of course, part of that as well is the 14 part video course, where I basically highlight the most popular technologies on the website. And nearly all of the technologies that I highlight are free or have a free option. I send you a video every three or four days and that can be really useful if you kind of want to boost your general knowledge of using technology in language teaching and language learning. If you'd like to do live training with me, then join me on Patreon. If you join me on Patreon, you get access every month to three additional videos. And these videos cover technologies that I often don't cover on YouTube. There's no advertisements. And I go into more detail around the ideas. So these are very much practical videos for giving teachers ideas of how they can use technology, teaching online or teaching in the classroom. Apart from that, of course, you get the live training with me. We meet once a month online. We look at one, normally just one technology, but sometimes two. And we do lots of activities with those technologies so that we get really familiar with them. Now, there's about 80 people on Patreon, but most people just accept the recording and don't join me live. But there's normally a group of about 10 or 12 people. And that's really interesting if you want practical ideas and you really want to build up your confidence with using the technologies. The other thing, if you join me on Patreon, you will get at this moment access to all the back dated content. So if you pay your $6 a month, not only will you get access to the new videos, but in fact, you'll get access to all the many videos that are already up on Patreon. So you might like to think about joining me on Patreon and joining me for live training.